All right, now to San Jose, where one plan to help out some of these 700 people who live in their vehicles isn't really panning out exactly as hoped. So back in July, the city opened up a safe parking site at the Santa Teresa VTL, VTA, that is, light rail station. So it has room for 42 vehicles. But two months later, it's still mostly empty. Our John Ramos heard from some RV dwellers about why they have no choice but to stay away. There's no doubt that cities are sincere about wanting to get homeless people off the street, but this safe RV parking facility in San Jose may be an example of what happens when you create a solution without taking into account the realities of the people you're trying to help. Just across from the Santa Teresa VTA station is this safe parking lot built by the city of San Jose to give homeless RV dwellers a secure place to live. The only problem is there aren't many RVs in it, only about 16 right now. But across town, on the streets near Columbus Park, there's a lot of them. Jessica Carrillo, who lives in the street side encampment, thinks it doesn't make much sense. It's all that space with nobody there to go to. I mean, and the more RVs that they think that there's going there, the more RVs show up in this area. So why aren't more people taking the city up on its offer? It turns out most of them can't. When they opened the safe parking facility, it included a requirement that any RVs staying there must be operational, insured, and have current registration. Jessica doubts that any of the vehicles in her area would fit that description. We're just getting these false advertising um, like promises that we'd be able to just get to live in a living home or living parking space and but we're not no one's ending up going there i haven't seen yet have seen any of the rvs here be moved the city realizes that and is looking into fixing the problem council member david cohen says he's not sure if the rules are the city's doing or if they're part of the contract with vta to use the land but he says they will be reviewing the situation on Tuesday at City Hall to see if there is a way to relax the standards. Obviously, it's very frustrating to have sites open uh, in the city and know that there's still so many RVs on the street. <clears throat> know that there's actually people who want to move into these sites, um, and yet there's still spaces empty. So we need to remove as many barriers as we can to, to get people into the site and do a better job of recruiting people and doing outreach so that we can fill the, sp the spots as quickly as possible. How tough is it to find a place where you can, where you can park where, they, where you're not, you know you're not going to get hassled? I don't know of any. I don't know of any places except for like one like this. This is the first one I've ever seen. Doug Wynn showed up at the RV site hoping to find a place to park his home, which is currently on a street near Tully Road. But he's in the same boat as a lot of motorhome dwellers when it comes to bringing their vehicles into full compliance. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm two years behind in my registration, so it probably cost me about at least, at least a couple thousand for sure, two thousand dollars at least. That's not the kind of money he or any of his neighbors have, so his search for a place to live continues. While on the other side of the fence, there's plenty of good intentions to go along with all that empty space. So the same barriers will be removed for an even bigger safe parking site set to open on Berryessa Road. Along with RV parks, the city is also looking at setting up temporary shelter sites with some of the 200 tiny homes provided by the state. One of the sites considered is the Cerrone VTA yard. A final vote on that proposal is set for next month.